Newgrounds. It's the genesis for animation exploding online. Practically every big animator on YouTube today either got their start or is heavily inspired by the legendary animators that dominated this site during its heyday in the 2000s. Utilizing Adobe, then Macromedia Flash, Newgrounds allowed for animations, games, music, hell, practically anything creative to be uploaded years before YouTube even existed. Its staunchly anti-censorship stance and huge, passionate, collaborative community of self-taught creatives gave birth to many early internet memes as they created anything from wholesome music videos to absurdly violent, vulgar, and sometimes challenging works of art. With the biggest creators sort of being like proto e-celebs in the pre-social media age. And there was a huge variation of animation styles present on Newgrounds. Sprite animation was big, especially early on. Stuff like the Madness Collection elected to use Flash's intended tweened animation style, while others use it to create traditional frame-by-frame -frame animation. Standouts of the early days would be guys like David Furt with the uber viral salad fingers. But the big cheese on the site would have to be Aaron Hansen, Ego Raptor with his awesome series being funny enough to dominate the site, despite the extremely rough production values. Oh my god, I'm so scared! Oh shit, dog, this is disgusting! Oh my god, it's disgusting hell! Hey guys, what's going on? Oh god, Jesus Christ! Ah! Hey man, you called? Oh god, oh god! Hey guys, what's up? Oh jeez, oh there's piss everywhere! Inspiring video game parodies to become the internet animator's bread and butter. But every animator on Newgrounds at the time looked up to one guy, by the name of Adam Phillips. He was actually a Disney animator who uploaded his personal projects on the site under the name Chulaid, and his skills absolutely blew the minds of everyone else with him pushing flash animation to levels no one thought possible, with every other animator on the site aspiring to reach his quality. I think a lot of people think of Newgrounds and imagine that Newgrounds animation style meme from a few years ago and think it's all crudely made offensive shit posts. But although that did make up a large portion of it, as you look through these creators backlogs you can see them grow more and more skilled with each submission till their animations went from looking like this to looking like this. And as Newgrounds grew it drew in tons of now huge names to give animation a try themselves. Hot Diggity Demon, Sir Palo, Oni and G, Psychopowls. And you really can't talk about this era without mentioning Ed Gould, with his iconic Ed's World series really standing out among the rest. This animated series was more like something you'd see on Cartoon Network than the typical by the mill one and a half minute video game parodies. With episodes sometimes exceeding 10 minutes and largely made entirely by Ed himself, featuring genuinely funny, sharp writing and ambitious visuals. It gained a huge, enduring fan base even today, outgrowing the site it originated from. And as time went on, Harry Partridge cemented himself as probably the most technically skilled animator of this era, probably still today, with his sublimely clean and professional looking style, full of generous, fluffy, Disney-esque frames, solid drawings, and a refined direction in the sea of chaos that was Newgrounds. Although that chaos had an undeniable charm, like my personal favorite, Cory Spazkid. His animations were the true encapsulation of Newgrounds, crude, horny, and violent, all packaged in an absurd, Rayman like talent for animation, with his controlled chaotic style full of wide spacing, cushioned by aggressive squishy slowouts, and a charming gestural drawing style that is wholly his own. And as the 2010s were drawing to a close, I'd say these kids making animations on their cheap Wacom bamboos did reach the level of quality of that Disney animator that seemed so mystifying all the way back in 2003. So although Newgrounds was a dominant place for animation in the 2000s, from its launch in 06, YouTube did have its own scene as well. There are guys like Alan Becker with his insanely creative Stickman vs. series of videos that I'm sure a lot of you are getting crazy nostalgia blasts looking at right now. But if Newgrounds was the home for 2D animation, you could think of YouTube as the home for other animation styles. Stop motion, Gmod movies, VFX, and of course 3D animation. I can't not mention Rooster Teeth here. Starting on their own website, these guys pioneered something called machinima animation. Basically animations made by moving around video game characters with their ludicrously popular Red vs Blue series. Using Halo 3 gameplay to create a comedy series that run for not multiple episodes but full on seasons. Continually evolving to until it incorporated full on hand keyed 3D animation. Notably this sequence made by the one Monty Ohm. Monty gained fame on YouTube with his insanely cool 3D animated fight sequences that were head and shoulders above what anyone else was doing at the time. Quickly moving on to working in actual game studios before being hired by Rooster Teeth to work for them with him really being the heart and soul of their similarly massive Ruby series. Largely due to it being a vehicle for his trademark epic animations that at this point shortly before his untimely passing were pretty much feature quality. 
Moving to the early 2010s, YouTube's animation community was expanding with stuff like the animation meme community gaining prominence, and the site was also starting to become a tantalizing prospect for the Newgrounds guys as well, since it offered both a bigger audience and much better monetization compared to the homegrown Newgrounds. Although there was pushback due to the tight-knit community that had formed on Newgrounds and YouTube's much lower video quality. They were meant to be seen on Newgrounds.com. Click that link on the right to go watch them how they were meant to be seen. Crystal clear without all this fuzzy compression bullshit. But eventually everyone started to post to work on both sites. So from this point forward, with the influx of Newgrounds animators, animation started to absolutely dominate YouTube. This is when the more contemporary guys really cemented their names. Oni and G was putting out banger after banger, with stuff like Dragon Ball P, Mugadium Liviosa, and his collaborative Hellbenders project with Psychopebbles, destroying the lexicon of teenage boys across the globe. Although well produced, the charm of these was more the unique comedy brought, rather than flexing their animation talents. With an emphasis not on flashy visuals, but movements used intelligently to emphasize the humor, and they were really freaking funny. D's, Hot Diggity Demon's magnum opus, the Pony.Move series, and Joe's mega viral shorts, just to name a few, were regularly racking up dozens of millions of views, allowing the most popular artists to go full-time making cartoons online, with most of them putting out their best work in this period. But everything changed in 2012, when YouTube shifted its algorithm to prioritize watch time over raw views, when it came to what to promote and advertise on. This decision, aimed at combating clickbait, ended up inadvertently devastating animators. Animation obviously takes a long time. Your average slot producer, or at the time I guess vlogger slash let's player, had no problem pumping out multiple 10 minute videos a week. But even the most productive animation channels would be lucky to get half a dozen two to four minute videos up a year, resulting in insanely low watch time and slashing their already modest revenue. Overnight, it became totally infeasible to make a living off of animation on YouTube. It was basically like 9-11 for video game parody animators. This resulted in animators needing to heavily adapt to stay alive on YouTube. Famously, Eagoraptor moves his focus to the Let's Play channel Game Grumps, along with the beloved video game reviewer JonTron, a channel that bittersweetly became wildly successful, at least monetarily far outperforming his animations, resulting in one of the all-time greats of online animation slowly abandoning the art form. Despite commonly shitting on Let's Players, Oni initially tried to make more basic animations, but eventually caved in and started up Oni Plays, becoming just as big as Game Grumps just a few years later. Although he and these guys did keep animating, but uh, we'll get back to that. Others managed to hold out thanks to their cult fan bases they amassed, utilizing stuff like merch and Patreon, or taking on freelance projects to get by. But at the end of the day, animation was just overall far less prevalent on YouTube, with creators having to greatly slow down or just abandon the site altogether. So I don't want to make it seem like animation was totally dead. If there's something you could call animators, it'd be tenacious. And the community lived on, with people posting sporadically, purely for the love of the game. A lot gained respectable audiences with fan animations, like Game Grumps Animated, MMDs, and multi-animator projects gained their own niches. And there are occasional videos that hit the YouTube mainstream, like reanimated projects, where sometimes hundreds of animators would come together to recreate beloved TV episodes or movies, with each recreating short segments in their own unique style, forming a totally unique and super cool experience, while also giving a platform for the new blood to gain an audience in the now hostile algorithm. But it was 2016 when animation really came back to life on YouTube, only in a much different form than what we had before. Storytime animation pioneered by Suzy and stylistically cemented by Domix, was essentially a blending of vlogs and animation, with a usually soft, wholesome, simplistic avatar of the creator recounting a relatable tale from their lives or musing on a general topic with wide appeal. And when the titans of this genre, The Odd Ones Out, and Jaden Animation's channels caught on around 2016, they really caught on, quickly rising to the peak of YouTube and far outperforming the animation channels that came before them. Pretty much purely personality driven, these were a huge departure from the short, often crude and shocking, skill flexing animations that we've been talking about up to this point. Storytime is laid back, inviting, intimate, and most immediately obvious, very minimally animated, with the creator's personality being the main appeal. They could get away with a very basic animation style, relying pretty much just on key poses, with the drawings being squished down and popping between each pose. They're much closer to animatics and presentation. This, along with the simplistic characters and backgrounds, often foregoing color altogether, allowed their videos to not only be much longer, but pumped out far more often than the previous generation's ambitious tunes. 
This, along with the content's much less edgy tone, allowing for it to appeal to a bigger audience, namely kids, made storytime animation a whole ass industry, with tons of others jumping on a storytime bandwagon. To be honest, uh, a majority of these were blatant clones that felt like they were hopping on the trend for a fuse due to the low skill barrier, rather than for a passion for animation. But others were just kids inspired by the bigger guys and inspired to get their start in the art form. That said, there were standouts with their own styles. Something else YT feared a little bit older. Amarichu had a very appealing anime styled artwork as opposed to the usual marshmallow people look. Didus had a unique voice I always found pretty funny and authentic. So, despite being the most popular form of animation on YouTube, considering how different the tone and audience was, I don't think Storytime was really eating into the audience of the struggling traditional animators, but that didn't stop the rapid rise from bringing with it an equally violent explosion of drama. As you see, the rise of Storytime just so happened to coincide with the explosion of the commentary community. Two genres that could not be more opposed. The main criticisms levied at the Storytime channels was that the videos were all the same, had inauthentic carbon copy personalities, and most of all had low effort visuals. To be honest, uh, those first two could be applied to any niche on YouTube, especially the fairy commentary channels making those comments. But when it came to the animation, I think some channels definitely didn't really care about the animation side of it, and they just saw it as a vehicle to put their personalities out there for, for easy views. And that's fine, you know, but the channels who grow the most, you could tell, really did care for the art form, and they were trying. I mean, the odds one now, for example, was putting out 5-8 to eight minute videos like every two weeks at his peak. Sacrifices have to be made there, but even still, you can tell he was improving, adding more movement and nicer visuals as time went on. And nowadays the biggest storytime channels can sometimes have honestly pretty great animation, as they grew to such a point that they could employ whole ass teams to work with them, allowing them to keep their algorithm friendly length and upload consistency while still putting out really high quality stuff. Although these channels aren't really my cup of tea, when I do check out one of them I'm often shocked to see how much the visuals have improved since I last checked in. After 2016, besides the story time guys, animation was starting to see a bit of a comeback. The algorithm was eased to be a lot less cutthroat in terms of what got recommended. We had guys like Meat Canyon and his team, at least for a while, being able to get by with his ridiculously popular animated parodies of online figures in his trademark grotesque style. And nowadays, you see a lot of channels incorporating animation into their videos to add personality. Sort of like the evolution of the talking PNG cartoon reviewer format, with this video essay style requiring far less animation per minute, allowing for longer videos that could earn halfway decent ad revenue. Major shoutouts to Funky, Doodle, and Max Cheese Brain Dump series. Even if you don't particularly care about whatever topic they're covering, these are worth watching for visuals alone. However, if there's one thing that defines this era, it'd have to be the rise of indie animation. In 2019, YouTuber FizzyPop uploaded a 30 minute passion project Has Been Hotel. With a huge team behind it, it ended up being, uh, pretty successful. Has Been has a very unique visual style and a humor that you'll either love or hate. Personally, I really like it, and it just exudes passion and ambition with how well animated, voice, the music, really everything here is. It's just at such a high level compared to what you'd expect to see from YouTube animation. And this was more than just a cool YouTube video. It was made as a pilot to be pitched and potentially picked up by a studio, which largely thanks to its online virality came true with it being picked up and premiering its first season on Amazon Prime just last year. This indie animation to full show pipeline truly raised the bar for what could be done in terms of online animation. So during the late 2010s, there'd be tons of projects following in its footsteps, using Kickstarter to crowdfund a pilot, hiring a huge team to bring their dream cartoon to life. Long Gone Gulch, Monkey Wrench, Lackadaisy, bringing new talented creatives to the forefront of online animation, inspiring the next generation of animators just as the Newground guys did. And others leveraged their popularity and skills they developed online to grow beyond YouTube. Smiling Friends, co-created by Newgrounds alumni Psycho Pebbles and Michael Cusack, premiered on Adult Swim in 2020. This show largely thanks to their resourceful, independent spirit and collaboration with dozens of other talented online animators, managed to look better than anything else on TV, despite its first season having roughly the budget of one episode of Family Guy. And it was an absolute roaring success pretty much saving the reputation and viability of mainstream adult animation, bringing the offbeat humor and collaborative spirit of Newgrounds to the mainstream, with it only becoming more and more popular each season, as I, and I'm sure a lot of you, eagerly await the turd that's currently in production. But when it comes to purely online animation, the one series that really stands above the rest is the cultural juggernaut, The Amazing Digital Circus. 
Made by animator Gooseworks, along with the Glitch Productions Animation Studio, and published on their YouTube channel, this currently two-episode series holds some real eye-candy visuals. It's 3D animated with a super cartoony, bouncy look that stands out offering a unique appeal even amongst mainstream 3D animation you'd see from big studios. This along with its solid comedy, without relying on shock value and instantly iconic and marketable characters, led to insane levels of success. Electing to maintain truly independent and on YouTube, it's by far the most successful of this indie cartoon renaissance. It and all these other series' popularity really stands as a ray of hope for the future of online animation that seemed so dark and uncertain just a few years ago.